In a beloved S-shaped strip of land, Vietnam is a multi-ethnic country with 54 distinct ethnic groups living and fighting together for national construction and defence for thousands of years. In this historical process, culture has generated an invisible power for the country. The combination of 54 ethnic groups has created Vietnamese culture as a colourful, bright, but simple and close picture. Each group represents a unique colour gamut, contributing to the flawless picture. When visiting Vietnam Museum of Ethnology and the windy capital of the ancient northernmost Vietnam base, people can feel great happiness as if they were going along the length of the country. The mountainous cultural area in northern Vietnam includes some provinces. Ha Giang, Lao Cai, Lai Chau, Son La, Diet Bien, Cao Bang, etc. This is the habitation of ethnic groups in three language groups. Hmong Zhao, Kadai, and Tang Mien. These ethnic groups are Hmong, Zhao, Ba Tan, La Ha, La Chi, Ko Lao, Pu Piao, Lo Lo, Fu La, La Hu, Hani, Gong, and Si La. Each has its own identity. Vietnam has two typical upland areas. The northern upland, featured by abrupt and endless mountains, is the source of streams. People live on mountain sides. It's hot in summer and cold in winter. This itself created the distinct cultural identity of inhabitants here. The imposing and rich savannas aren't called highlands, but these places and mountains are the habitation of ethnic groups. And now our filmmaking group is present at Vietnam Museum of Ethnology. Let's discover the Northern High Mountain region in the outdoor exhibition, whose values are preserved in the museum. In the outdoor exhibition area of Vietnam Museum of Ethnology, the northern high mountainous region are vividly reflected in an area of 4,000 square meters. Plans. The traditional houses of the White Hmong Dong Da district, Hazang province, the statue groups of Hmong families in markets, the surrounding landscape system, stone fences, shifting cultivating areas, terraced fields and indigenous trees such as peach, plum and corn, in association with the landscape of the northern mountainous region, the master of the house. Due to the control of topography, the main economic model of mountain residents is cultivation on milpas. Farming in small landholds and on terraced fields is carried out on complicated terrain. People make use of cat ear shaped small land gorges and caves in the mountains to plant corn and cucurbit. It's very interesting that with such difficulties, highlanders still created ploughs to replace human labour. They are short, big and sharp with pointed plowshares. They are cast suitably to the soil and are able to plunge deeply into the soil, flip off tree roots and be intact when smashing into rocks. From corn trees growing in landholds in the mountains, people proceeded a dish called mem mem to eat with tang ko. Tang ko is made from bones, flesh and organs of animals. This food became a very particular cuisine, bearing a specific flavour of mountainous regions. Costumes of Highlanders still preserve many traditional factors. Each ethnic group and each area has its own nuances, expressed through designs, tailoring techniques and decorative textures on their clothes. If Hmong women are outstanding in colourful tutus, 
Dao women are subtle in their traditional dress, embroidered with Tao Ku, dog-shaped image, the symbol of humans' ancestors. If Fula women in Safo group are impressive, with palm-shaped and mountain-foot-shaped designs on their costume, Pupiao and Lolo women are highlighted by geometric patterns. People in upland areas love festivals very much. Whenever spring brightly comes, it's high time for a new festival season. Some outstanding festivals are Gao Tao of Hmong, fire jumping of Pa Tien, forest worshipping of Han Ni, Tet of dancing of Dao, etc. True festivals, all people are immersed with the earth to pray for peace, health, good weather and bumper crops. Visiting the cultural space of upland markets, we can feel a very unique culture associated with villages. Many roads fall across the mountain sides, and the busy sounds of pan pipes and flutes can be found nowhere else. Markets are the places for cultural and spiritual activities, for you to meet and share their feelings, and for people to make friends and love. The sounds of pan pipes and the umbrella dance of boys and girls in upland areas have contributed to enriching the performing arts of the country. It's important that the panpipe tone has warmed villagers, dispelled the silence of mountains and increased love of Hmong girls and boys. The museum has reappeared life in Hmong houses. Every year on Tet, many Hmong girls and boys participate in markets, cook tang ko, corn liquor and men men and play the flute and dance with panpipes. Ethnic groups in the North Mountainous areas mainly live on cultivation. Their main food crops are rice and corn. It can be said that cultivation on milpas plays a very important role in the lives of people in uplands. It is associated with landscape and environment of the tribes. People use fields that have been burned, hoed up or ploughed to cultivate. Hmong, Lolo, Pupiao, Kolao and Red Dao people farming in narrow fields with high slope utilise the land position and shifting cultivation to grow corn and potato. People here also grow long time industrial crops such as tea, cinnamon and speciality crops including cardamom, acanthophanax, kohlrabi, cabbage, fruit trees and other farm crops. Cultivation in small landholds of mountains is the typical cultivation form of people in uplands. In Milpas, people practice slashing, burning, hoeing, ploughing and sowing. Corn is the main crop in Hmong fields. In rice harvests, people use cutter to cut each rice ear, bind them in sheaves, then dry them right on the field before bringing them home. Corn is grown in March, April and harvested in July every year. In addition to shifting cultivation, people also take advantages of sloping terrain and improve land to both cultivate water rice and maintain soil nutrients. Because of the quite disadvantaged terrain, difficult transport that many villages are constructed on high mountain sides, village fairs in uplands are held every five to seven days. These days on trails crossing the mountainsides, each group of people come in flocks to the fairs. Some people wear papooses on their backs. Some people lead their horse carrying goods. It's very special that the goods brought into the markets are very simple and essential. They are agricultural and forestry products, food, livestock and poultry, etc. But the most important is the honesty in trading exchanges. Fruits are held in baskets sophisticatedly knitted by bamboo or packed in prinium and palm leaves. Bamboo shoots, cat's ears, mushrooms, peppers, garlics and gingers are treaded. The honesty is also expressed in fixing prices of goods, sometimes inflexibly fair. For instance, every bundle of vegetables, string of fruit basket, even a chicken or duck, no matter how it's big or small or a kilogram of fat or lean meat is sold in the same price. 
They never lower their prices, although they can't sell their products that day. When the market is closed, they can bring their unsold goods home and sell them in the coming markets. All are very simple and close, showing the typical flavour of mountains and forests. People come to the markets not for commercial purposes of buying or selling something, but for meeting and talking with other people. The sound of talking and laughing make everything boisterous, breaking the inherent silence of mountains and forests. Just a tang crow pot or steamed fishes baked greasily in yellow can make people legless. They play lay co game so passionately that mountains and forests are also deemed to move. The sound of panpipes and flutes seem to earnestly call friends and cover all high mountains and thick forests. Visiting the village fairs in uplands, people can come across their original beauty that never appear in other places. There are images of Hmong girls in brocade dresses holding their umbrellas in hands. There are also images of boys delivering goods by their horses. The horse neighs make forest corners bustling and lively. Umbrellas cover sky and clouds. Horses neigh as if it's time to fight. There are always grounds for tying horses before people enter upland markets. Some grounds are very crowded with hundreds of horses under the halo of Palm Forest. Because horse is the most important means for ethnic groups, it is close to Highlanders whenever they are happy or sad or facing difficulties. However, the most impressive colour here is of gaudy, multicolour dresses of Hmong, Dao, Lolo, Paten and Pupiao people. Hmong men and women play the pan pipes and dance with umbrellas in a romantic and touching manner. Especially in the market corner of food culture, tourists can enjoy tang ko and mem mem and corn liquor, which are self preceded and distilled by Hmong people. At this market, we can communicate with friends from the plains or other mountain villages through offering each other a cup of wine or a bowl of tang ko with a fragrant scent of cardamom. The honest and sincere communication of mountainous people in village fairs has opened people's hearts. Friendship is multiplied by many fold. People can make more friends. Regarding Hmong couples after their hard working days on the fields, the market days are opportunities for a wife to encourage her husband by fully feeding him with tang ko and letting him entirely get drunk on wine with his friends. The wife is seemingly happier when her husband is completely drunk. Perhaps she has a particular explanation. Her husband gets drunk, he intimately exchanges with his friends, and every husband needs this sincere and enthusiastic virtue. Getting drunk, he can lay beside stump or roadside, but his wife still patiently holds an umbrella and waits for her husband to sober up. At that time, she takes out her linen ball to connect fibres, which seems to strengthen the love and maintain the traditional handicraft. When her husband sobers up, she lets him go back to the horse and lead the horse back to the mountains. After the village fair, married love is multiplied. The Hmong man seems to be healthier to produce more rice and corn to feed his whole family. And this couple can go to next markets together. Perhaps this is a unique tradition of Hmong people. It can be said that markets of the northern mountainous ethnic groups is where the lives of people in Vietnam's upland areas are reflected. The outstanding feature is the material and spiritual cultural space where traditional culture and human behaviours of people in upland areas Ha Zang, ha Zang is an area converging the culture of 22 brotherly ethnic groups. In this province, Hmong accounts for a large amount. Regarding the northern upland culture, we can't help mention the Hmong culture, especially the traditional houses of the white Hmong in Ha Zang province. 
a meticulous work is chosen to go on display in Vietnam Museum of Ethnology. Villages of high mountainous groups are built on high mountain slopes or halfway up the mountain with cool climate but rare water and difficult transport. There are three types of houses in upland areas. Stilt, Ert or half stilt, and half ert. They are traditional houses of Hmong, Dao, and Paten ethnic groups. The half stilt and half ert house is the typical cultural feature of La Chi Dao group in the northern central Vietnam and a part of the Lolo. These models represent three typical houses of Hmong Dao, Kadai, and Tang Mien ethnic groups. They are the earth houses of Hmong, the half stilt, half earth of La Chi, and the stilt houses of La Ha people. Zhao and La Chi people living half down the mountain usually make use of lowland to build their half stilt and half earth houses. These houses include two overlapping roofs. The higher roof covers three stilt compartments for staying and living. Just a compartment on the ground is used to cook and store agricultural equipment and rice mortars, etc. Each house has only one staircase between the ground and the floor. On the floor, the left compartment has two chambers. The front compartment is built to store belongings of parents and the other is a kitchen used to heat the room and cook meals. The second compartment is the altar of the second born child. The last one is for the first child. Unmarried daughters have no private rooms. They usually sleep on stilts to the left or the front room. The house walls are made of land and only door is opened in front of the house. Houses of Hmong, Hani and Lahu people have earthen walls and wooden roofs. It is cool in summer and warm in winter. It can also avoid storms. Houses of Hmong people are usually built based on the land direction. Their backs lean on mountains. They have wooden gates and are surrounded by 1.5 meter high stone fences. The gates are made of solid wood with two doors opening inwards. The gate roof is covered by zao bark or tiles. The gate framework includes two main pillars and two auxiliary ones, two supporting pillars and horizontal and vertical girder system that is linked together by smooth tenons with gluts to create a solid framework of gate. The middle compartment is always larger than two next ones. All compartments have partitions made of wooden pieces and doors between each two compartments. The middle one has a main door. The two auxiliary ones have doors to go behind the house and doors to go inside the house. All the doors are wooden and have hinges. Hmong houses always have a wooden attic to hold family furniture and two next auxiliary attics to store food such as rice, corn, barley, maize, beans, peas and other equipment. The attics are also the sleeping places for the sons when some guests visit the family. Women cannot sleep in the attics. In the houses of white Hmong people, the sleeping place of each family member is clearly arranged. The right inside room is the bedroom for the host couple. The opposite room is for daughters-in-law and daughters. Guests and other members in the family will sleep in the left room. Ancestor's altar is a little slanted towards the right with a ghost pillar. It is a big sheet of paper on wall that is embroidered with circular patterns. It is a big sheet of paper on the wall that is embroidered with circular patterns and some chicken feathers that are red with chicken blood. When worshipping, people use a wooden table under the altar to put meat, alcohol, an incense burner, and the priest will carry out rituals here. The kitchen is located in a small area in the structure of Hmong House, but it plays a very important role. It reflects the family traditions, orders and disciplines, as well as the business and prosperity of the family. It is located at the end of the house. 
the framework of smoking shelf is firmly established. This shelf is seen as a corn reserve storage of the family. Harvested corn is loaded here, then it is dried by the kitchen smoke, so it will never be eaten by wood borers. Only when people need to pack them is corn taken down, shelled into grains, then grinded into smaller pieces. Under the smoking shelf, people often hang dry food such as chili, dried venison, seeds, etc. So Hmong people have some words. If wanting to know who is good, let's see his smoking shelf. The kitchen is the place showing the personality, talents and skills of the man in Hmong families to organize a family towards effective business and prosperity. The Hmong in Vietnam are divided in four main groups, white, green, flower and black. They mainly live in high mountainous provinces such as Lao Cai, Ha Giang, Yen Bai, Lai Chou, Diet Bien, Sun La, Ne An and Tai Nguyen. Similar to other ethnic groups, they have lots of distinct cultural features. Now, we just mentioned their outstanding features. Firstly, regarding the residential geography, they like living in high mountains with cold and dry weather. They have the traditions to readily change their home to another new place if the living conditions aren't suitable. They quickly get used to changes despite living in agricultural society or industrial society in developed countries. Therefore, at present, we can meet many Hmong people in developed countries such as the US or some other countries which are very successful in both science and business. Secondly, regarding eating and drinking customs, they have vegetable soup which is tasteless without salt to eat with men mem. Thirdly, regarding their costumes, basically they prefer gaudy colors and they are very good at clothes gafting techniques. In marriage and family, they have customs of dragging wife or robbing wife. The coherence in their community is high. For people in the same line or sharing the common origins with Hmong people, they will help them with all their hearts in any circumstances. Regarding music, their unique instruments are pan pine and flute. In terms of sports, they like horseback riding, horse racing and shooting. Regarding the architecture of Hmong houses, irrespective of many different localities and ecological areas, their houses have some following unique features. Firstly, they are earthen houses. All activities are carried out on the ground, not on the floors as in stilt houses. Secondly, the major materials of these houses are herbs such as wood, bamboo and leaves. Thirdly, in the house architecture, the main pillar or ghost pillar in the compartment of hosts plays a particularly important role, because this is the inhabitation of the host's souls according to the conception of Hmong people. In the history of 54 Vietnamese ethnic groups, Hmong people, with its own culture, has contributed to the cultural identity of the northern mountainous areas. Visiting the Vietnam Museum of Ethnology and learning the culture of